I'd like to start. The rules committee met yesterday for the first time, actually, where we were seated in our room, and you know, so I'd like to just take out my 15 seconds to stand up. If you're on the rules committee, please stand up. By the direction of the committee, I move that the SRAC uphold the chairman's clarification of Rule 8C. Okay, I'm going to have the um, parliamentarian going to come up and explain to you what that means. You do have a, you do have within your packet a letter from myself to the chair asking, requesting clarification of Rule 8C, as well as his response. Okay, 
we have in disagreement and ambiguity? Well, we have a procedure laid out in RPT rules that states the manner in which that is to be resolved. Rule 1F states that if any member of the Republican Party sees an ambiguity, they can request a clarification from the chairman, state chairman. State chairman issues a clarification. That clarification is binding on the Republican Party until the SRAC otherwise clar clarifies it. The chair has considered this motion and has ruled that a majority vote is only at the organizational meeting after it requires a two-thirds vote. That's the overall situation you're looking at, and that's the parliamentary procedures that are involved in addressing it. Thank you. All right, so but for additional background, so you understand, I mean, if you follow up, sorry, this is gonna be a very complicated discussion, I apologize. We're trying to take, make it as simple as possible for, because it's, it's pretty much into the weeds of parliamentary procedures. So the chair of the rules committee, your rules committee, said, I would like clarification according to uh, Article One, I think, of the rules. The state chairman, if there's some uh, confusion, the 1F, uh, the state chairman it can't, any of y'all can do the same thing. If there was, uh, in fact, uh, one of the members here, I won't call her out, had an issue about uh, several months ago, the question was about notification with respect to um, the organizational meeting of executive committees, I believe, and sent me a, a question and said, would you please clarify? And then I issued a ruling. I don't, I'll just tell you as an aside, I don't issue rulings when it comes to the rules without working very closely with the parliamentarian. Uh, I've done parliamentary procedure for a long time, but I'm certainly not the expert that they are. And so I always count with general counsel and his assistants and the parliamentarian, I work very closely with them. So I sought their assistance with respect to this and have issued a clarification. The clarification essentially said because of the confusion and the way the vote was presented at the convention, we're gonna play that video here in just a second. Uh, because of the way it was uh, articulated, that the delegates were voting on that issue that way only applies to the organizational committee meeting, not, the, not all the bylaws, just that meeting, then my ruling is that it was restricted just to that meeting. It doesn't. It was not a overlying uh, demand or requirement on all the bylaws. So I'll play the video. We'll have Mike play the video, and then uh, we'll take questions. But uh, the, the motion on the floor, at, essentially, as you're thinking about and what you hear, is my ruling is that what happened at the convention when it was voted on by the delegates tells us that it was only the organizational meeting. And therefore, the motion on the floor is to affirm what my ruling was. That's the, the motion on the floor. If you affirm, yes, I see exactly what it was. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you should, we, in your packets, there's, why don't you say this? Yeah. His reasoning for his decision, I just wanted to make it very clear, it's not an arbitrary decision. His reasoning is very clearly laid out, as is my reasoning for my question. But um, in conjunction with both parliamentarians, the outgoing and incoming, he uh, gave his reply. So, um, if you're like me, sometimes you ignore a lot of papers or you shuffle papers around and you don't read them. These are just be read. Yeah, and these, uh, her email to me and my response are in your package. So, hopefully, you found it. All right, Mike, would you go ahead and play? Uh, this, we, we record, obviously, we record the state conventions uh, during the session, and this is a snippet of the overall, you obviously, the one here, eight hours or 10 hours, 12 hours. So this is a snippet of that particular situation. Go ahead, Mike, please.
just repeat that. By the direction of the committee, I move the adoption of amendment to Rule 8C, found on page 4 of the committee report. The amendment to Rule 8C deals with the agenda at the SRAC organizational meeting. The question on the floor is on the adoption and amendment to Rule 8C. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up for discussion. Anyone have any comments or questions about the video? Yeah, I do, Mr. Chairman. Can you go to the microphone? Yeah, I'm going to have to. I have a question about the video. You have a question about the video? I'd ask a question about the video, yeah. Oh, okay, let's get Jeremy first, because he's been at the microphone, and we can ask Jacob and JP. Go ahead, thank you. Jeremy Blosser, SD10. I want to make sure I heard the words correctly. The chairman of the Rules Committee said he is moving adoption of the amendment printed on page 4 of the report. I heard that correctly, yes? And then he stated that that amendment deals with the agenda of the organizational meeting, correct? His words. No, he did not. Please play it again. Please play it again. I said it. Please play it again. By direction of the committee, I move the adoption of amendment to Rule 8C, found on page 4 of the committee report. The amendment to Rule 8C deals with the agenda at the SRAC organizational meeting. So the totality of his remark, just to be sure I'm hearing correctly, is that it dealt with the agenda. The amendment to Rule 8C, printed on page 4, said that it had the additional language that we were adding was that the SRAC at their organizational meeting would include in their agenda adoption of bylaws, correct? No, I'm going to let you finish because I took that to mean something different. But you go ahead. I'm asking a question. What I took from what he said deals with the approval. The part of the agenda that he was speaking of was the approval of the bylaws. That was what it was containing. I understand what you're saying and your interpretation is different than mine. The way I heard what I heard him say was, and that's why I issued the ruling I did, is the approval, not the agenda per se, but deals with the agenda that includes the approval of the officials committee, the bylaws. And so that is the approval. The only thing it applies to are the approval of the bylaws of the organizational meeting. My question is, I don't understand how your ruling is addressing when all he – he's not wrong. There's this proposal that what he said was incorrect or wasn't incorrect. Does the amendment portion go to the organizational meeting or not? There were two parts of the amendment that were printed. One was that we now include something in our agenda explicitly in the rules, the adoption of bylaws, which is what he referred to. And then it goes on to say what those bylaws can include. So I'm not sure where the ambiguity is in his remark. And I can save the rest of this so we don't get into the debate, but I'm asking that question because I want to make sure I heard the words right. If I heard agenda, I didn't hear him say one word about amendment. I heard him refer to what was in the written report and then say it deals with the agenda of the organizational meeting, which it does, but it deals with more than that. So let me ask the question this way. Is your ruling that if a committee chair at the state convention says I'm moving adoption of this language printed in the book and it deals with A, and that amendment also deals with B and C, but he doesn't mention it, you're suggesting that a delegate has to raise a point of order or B and C will fall out of what's adopted by the convention? I'm not saying that at all, Jeremy. Please clarify. Okay. Based on the – and we had testimony yesterday, or they had the all testimony rule. We're going to have to break for lunch. So I'll respond to that, and then we'll take a recess for lunch, and then we'll have Jeremy come back and continue, and then he can kind of overlap and go back to what he said earlier. But based on what that was – my ruling is based on the interpretation of what was presented to the delegates of the state convention, which is the ultimate authority in our party, and what they interpreted that they were voting on, which that the change in this was only relevant to the organizational meeting, which is on the agenda of the organizational meeting, is to approve the bylaws, not to include everything else. So why don't we take a break for – we're going to have the blessing. Y'all, this is going to go on probably for a while, I would suspect. So – and that's fine. But why don't we not get any further into the weeds, and we'll get Jeremy to come back and finish his argument. Thank you. Thank you.
come back to the microphone. Um, yeah, uh, Farmer Terry asked a question about whether it was properly put for the body of chief. Uh, the chair of the rules committee said, by the direction of the committee, I move we, I think she said we affirm or confirm the chairman's uh, rule. Is that right? So it is uh, properly in front of the uh, body. So, uh, okay, so at this time, if you stand. Uh, Pastor is uh, not able, to, uh, he had another commitment, so he had to run over to that. Uh, and it's going to be with us at the governor's mansion. So he asked if I would do the blessing. So if you please bow with me. Dear Lord, we just thank you and praise you for, I praise you for a republic. I praise you for a country that uh, we have a democracy, but we're a republic that represents um, the values of the people, Father. We just thank you for the, what's happened in November. And we are elated that your hand moved upon us, Father, and was able to uh, enable us to be successful presidential election in the also the Congress, Lord. We just thank you for these people here today. I thank you for the members, the volunteers, the, uh, the visitors, Lord. I thank you that people care enough to give up an important part of their day, an important part of their week and their month uh, for, to come and be a part of this process. And just pray also uh, for safety as they return home later today. Pray over this food, Father. Pray you bless it to, our nourish, to the nourishment of our bodies. We give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so can Anne Marie or can we tell us the procedure? I don't guess we need tickets, right? Could you, uh, the visitors, the, the watch is for SREC members. Oh, you are SVP, so you have your ticket. Uh, so you have to have a ticket to have lunch, so please uh, go ahead and run that. Oh, and then uh, once we eat, um, Senator Corden will be here, of course, he's sponsoring it, and uh, we'll hear some remarks from him. Kyle, do you have something? You, you said it, just present your ticket to the folks in the, in the, in the lunch line, and you're, you'll get your meals. Okay.